aid or resume that he died for our sins. Acts 4, uh, 9 through 12 clearly reinforces that teaching. And a great principle of reading your Bible is that Scripture will always support Scripture. Scripture always uh, agrees with Scripture. Scripture will always uh, verify Scripture. And we get our scriptural support from within the document of the Bible. And this is what makes the Bible such an amazing book. And I've done a, a study before called the Your Amazing Bible. And, and we look at some of the historical uh, events that occur in the Bible and how modern history and, and study shows these to be true. We look at archaeology, which uh, the Bible establishes, and then modern archaeology supports it. We look at scientific discoveries, which even like the earth being flat that the world embraced and the religious world embraced and scientific community embraced, the, the Bible clearly taught in Isaiah 42 that the world was round and uh, Columbus verified that in 1492 and now we all agree that the world is round. But the Bible declared it long before science or uh, any religious groups would even consider it. They scoffed at it. Everyone knows the, the world is flat. Everyone knows if you sail too far, you'll fall off the edge. And in fact, if you believe otherwise, you're a heretic. You're, you're crazy. And today, when we hold up the Bible and declare what's true in it, guess what? You're crazy. That can't be right. We know better. We've, we've studied. We have laboratories. We, we're right and you're wrong. Well, again, whenever science and the Bible don't agree, just give science some more time. They're working on it. Okay? The Bible is always true. It doesn't have to one day be proved true. It is true. Jesus said when he was praying to his Father in John 17, 17, he said, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. The word of God, the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation is all true. Whether the scientific community, whether sociologists and programs and, and, and political correctness agrees with it, the Bible is true. And in fact, the scriptures is very clear when it says, let God be true and every man a liar. So if we don't agree, even if we got consensus among the entire human race, over 7 billion people, and we all said that God was wrong, he's still right. So... In, in Acts, uh, it declares that Jesus and only Jesus, none other name given among heaven, whereby we must be saved. Now let's get back to Galatians. We're almost done with our introduction. Paul then begins to address a problem that had crept into this church. And in verse 6, he introduces it. And I'll, we'll pick up on this next week. I'm go going to be using the book of Galatians as the framework for this study on counterfeit Christianity. Because it's such a good uh, uh, foundational book. And it's also very rich in, in theology. Although I'm never going to mention that at the front end because you go, uh-oh. That's one of those words that sounds boring and long. And uh, what we're looking at is wanting to know the true from the false. Let's look at verse 6 as we are concluding. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Paul had described to the Galatian believers uh, that Jesus had died on the cross, that he was buried and rose again. We just read that in Acts 4, 9 through 12. Jesus Christ, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, that is the gospel. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4 tells us that the gospel is the fact that Christ died, was buried, and rose again. It is the central component of Christ's work. And when a counterfeit group, when a cult, when someone wants to gain advantage of you, they will depart from that. They will minimize that and want you to start doing things for their organization so that you can make up for what Christ came short on. 
But let me remind you, Jesus didn't come short in any way, shape, or form. He did a perfect work on the cross and did everything necessary to buy you and I out of the slave market of sin that we put ourselves in by our own actions. However, even though Paul had pastored these churches, even though Paul had prayed for them, after he left, and we, we find in verse 6, it says, I marvel that you are so soon removed. So apparently he was not gone long when they already began to entertain false teaching. They began to take counterfeit bills. They began to not look and just took whatever they were taught as true. And so as we begin this series and over the next few months, I want to encourage you to, to seek truth, look for that security tape and everything that you read and hear and I believe God's going to do a great work in establishing your faith and mine for days ahead. Let's pray. Father, thank you that you have given us the clear and, and I believe exciting message of, of Scripture that Jesus was not just a great teacher, as one world religion claims. He was not just an exalted man, as another cult would claim. But in fact, he left heaven. He was with you in eternity and he came to earth in order to die for our sins the just for the unjust that he might bring us to God thank you for that thing that he did that no one else can ever do or claim and father this morning it's my prayer that if there's someone here who maybe for the first time has really understood who Christ was and has known about the, him or understood something else, but for the first time today realized that Jesus died for them and that there is no other way to be reunited with you, that they would put their full trust and hope in a perfect Savior named Jesus Christ. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Would you stand? And as Kelly leads us in some reflective songs of invitation, if you have a spiritual need, I'll be here at the front to receive anyone. If you've not trusted in Christ as your Savior, the Bible says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. As you sing, watch for the counterfeit and look for the true. Whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. John 6, 37. Hymn 315, Room at the Cross. We're going to do this backwards, okay? We're going to do the verses 3, 2, 1. My Savior is strong, and the love of my Savior is long. Through sunshine or rain, through loss or in gain, the blood flows from Calvary to cleanse every stain.
We appreciate your attention this morning. I hope you look forward to this series. If you might read ahead in Galatians and uh, see what Paul.